Uh, NC State at Clemson this weekend. It's funny how teams can be in a wildly similar situation while also like the, the oxymoron of it have absolutely nothing similar in this situation. If you look around the, the, the state of North Carolina, there are quarterback controversies all over the place. Controversy might not be the right word. Changes. The Panthers benching Bryce Young going to Andy Dalton. Uh, UNC, potentially, if they start Jacoby Criswell, who's, who finished last game as uh, the quarterback, they'll be on their third quarterback in four games due to injury, due to decision, due to whatever. NC State is starting a true freshman quarterback. I mean, he hasn't even been on the sideline for college football games for a month yet, and he is already starting against Clemson That'd on the CJ road. Bailey on the road at Death Valley, six six. I, th- I believe when he showed up, he was like one hundred and eighty five pounds. It looks like he's up to two ten, two fifteen now, according to the the uh, the team. But this is a young guy, which is why I'm I'm going to say this, and it's going to sound crazy for State fans. It's house money for NC State this weekend against Clemson. C.J. Bailey is not supposed to play well this weekend. Freshmen going on the road to Clemson in their first career start, let alone their first career start on the road, let alone their first career start in conference, their first overall career start are not supposed to play well. They're supposed to struggle. That's a gift in a weird way. Would you rather have like a veteran that is playing well? Sure. But the the knowledge of nobody expects anything out of you, go ahead and let it rip, is sometimes freeing in a lot of ways. You know, I've I've kind of become weirdly obsessed with this comparison to the the Phillip Rivers first road start in the ACC. Uh the last time a NC State true freshman quarterback started a road conference game was Phillip Rivers. A true freshman starting quarterback, road ACC game. C.J. Bailey this weekend. Before that, Phillip Rivers. And and his first road start in the ACC was at number five Clemson. So it was actually a more daunting Clemson if you look at national rankings. Uh, Learn from that start. Learn from it. And here's what I mean. Uh, He threw for 371 yards and three touchdowns and no picks, which makes you just go, you know what? That's what a future NFL Hall of Famer looks like. Can't teach it. And part of that is true. But the other part of Phillip Rivers that C.J. Bailey can learn from is Phillip Rivers threw it 48 times. He had 48 passing attempts, and he completed 21 of them. Oh. that I mean, it's roughly 43, 43 and change percent completion. I mean, there are baseball players that get a hot month and hit 430. That's like, true. Like, there's a lot of failure mixed into that 371 yard, three touchdown, no interception day for a true freshman on the road at Clemson. But obviously, it, he didn't let it hold him back. He didn't let uh, a handful of incompletions make him more timid on the next one. He was willing and and able to understand that nobody expects anything from me. So watch what I do with it. If the team, meaning outside of the coach, or sorry, outside of the quarterback, plays like they played through the first three games, you're going to lose to Clemson anyway. There's enough flaws out on that field from the trenches specifically through the first three games for NC State that that you'll lose if you play like that. But nothing says you can't play better. It's the best part about sports. There's always next week. Nothing says you can't play better. C.J. Bailey needs to just go out there and worry about C.J. Bailey. And if you have a bad play, we'll talk about it in film on Monday. Right now, focus on the next one. Let it rip, young man. Let it rip. It's cliche, the the whole let it rip thing. The the, the We say it all the time. Yeah. Cut it loose. Let it rip. It's much more easily said than done. Mm-hmm. But every little bit, you can get closer and closer to that side of the spectrum, which, by the way, Phillip Rivers may have invented that line of the spectrum. The dadgummit, I'm going to let it fly. Like, that is Phillip Rivers. You can get closer and closer to the way that guy thought on a football field, you'll be doing a okay. Dave Doran, the head coach, was asked how C.J. Bailey is handling this week leading up to that Clemson game. He's consistent. You know, I think there isn't any moment that we've put in front of him where he hasn't responded, as you would hope. Uh, regardless of age, I mean, any player for that matter, and you can go back to the spring game, it was, you know, he 
went against the first defense the whole day and had a really good day. So every time we've put him in a challenging situation, he's just been the same guy. He's been consistent. He's been uplifting. He's had energy. He bounces back if something happens. He's very coachable. So, you know, those are habits. You know what I mean? And, and you always fall back on your habits. It's, it's about not rising to the occasion. I saw someone write that. That's not what happens. The guys return to the habits that they've created, and he has a lot of winning habits, you know. That's all great. I actually think it's a really well said, like kind of paragraph from Dave Doran. The only thing I would add is it's not the same. The road Clemson is not like, oh, at least he faced uh, many of the ones in the spring game. Uh, it's, it's not the same yet. And I've seen a lot of people throughout my career, throughout my playing career who They were the same guy no matter what. They were the same guy no matter what. They were the same poise. They were the same poise until you see it in the NFL. Oh, he's great in college. Oh, he's great on his rookie deal. Oh, look at that. He got $200 million. Now he plays tight. It's like, well, he was always the same guy before that. The stakes are raising for for a player like C.J. Bailey, but you just want him to, to, I guess, not rise to it, but but remain the same even at the – you know, facing of bigger and and more difficult consequences and bigger and more difficult challenges. Uh, Doran, again, speaking with the media, the head coach, talks about the challenges of facing Clemson on the road. Well, I mean, they're talented. You know, they've been in the same system, the continuity um, that he's had longer than me, obviously. So, you know, they have a system. You know, their kids know it. So do we. We have a system. Uh, the crowd noise always on the road, and particularly when you're down there, uh, can be a part of distracting guys and guys, you know, not focusing on the right things with all the things around them. And so just the environment and conversely, there's, there's nothing better than getting a big crowd quiet, you know, and you have to do that. You have to earn that through the way you play the game. And so we got a big challenge in front of us when you go into someone else's stadium that has, you know, the fanfare that they do. I'm going to build off of that with a story that was passed along to me on the pack therapy podcast, which by the way, check it out episode for this week to get you ready for the Clemson game featuring myself and Mike Glennon. Uh, available everywhere podcasts can be found, including our YouTube page, 99.9 The Fan. Um, Mike was talking about, right, this, this is why Mike is is so insightful in these sorts of things. He talks about playing at Clemson for as the quarterback for NC State. It's pretty direct knowledge of what C.J. Bailey is going to be going through. And, and I made the point that the best sound in the world is, is a completely silent away stadium, right? The louder they are at kickoff, the louder they are when when you're in the on third down, the more quiet it feels when you convert that third down or when you score a touchdown. And uh, Mike told a story about how they were at Clemson, a game they ended up winning, uh, and and he let the ball go, right? Quarterback throws it. It's what they do. And he got hit. And so he's on his back, right, as happens when you get hit by a defensive lineman. And he didn't know if it was caught or not, right? The ball's in the air, and he's you know, trying to figure out what happened, and he just heard the entire Clemson Stadium go absolutely silent, and he went, catch. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Must have caught it, right? It's like that's that's the only way that goes like that. Um, so, you know, the, the best part about playing on the road in a raucous environment is you have the potential to control the volume. Play well, they're going to get quieter. Build a lead, they're going to get quieter. Shock them at the end of the game, they're going to go from very, very loud to very, very quiet very, very quickly, and it's going to feel awesome. 